Good evening. Welcome to the National News Broadcast. I'm Kassani Balachandra. Good evening. I'm Clifford Richards. First of all, we'll take a look at the headlines. The second reading of the budget has been passed with a two-thirds majority. 319 more COVID-19 patients have fully recovered. Further operations in search of a woman who escaped from the IDH hospital. 70% of the distribution of fertilizer free of charge for the Maha season has been completed. Information relating to many irregularities in the construction of the Central Expressway. Cremation of the most venerable Napana Pemasiri Mahanayaka Thera will take place with full state honours tomorrow. There will be a live telecast of proceedings by the national television. Several plans of the bombers of the Easter attack have been revealed in the Presidential Commission for the first time. Rich countries engage in attempts to keep in their possession the authority of Corona vaccines and medicines. Moving on to those and other stories in detail. The second reading of the budget presented for the year 2021 was passed by a two-third majority in Parliament today. There were 151 votes in favour and only 52 against the budget. Accordingly, it was passed by a majority of 99 votes. The second reading of the appropriation bill for the fiscal year 2021 has been approved in the Parliament with a majority of 99 votes. The House passed the second reading with 151 votes in favour and 52 against. Opposition MPs Diana Gamage, AASM Rahim and Ishaq Rahuman have voted in favour of Budget 2021 as well. Former President Maitri Palasirisena has also supported the new budget proposal. The debate on second reading, which commenced on Wednesday, continued for the fourth consecutive day to Today and the vote commenced at around 5.35 p.m. The debate of the committee stage or the third reading of the budget proposal is set to commence on Monday and it will conclude on the 10th of December and accordingly the final vote will take place at 5 p.m. on that day. Prime Minister Mahindra Raja Paksa in his capacity as the Minister of Finance presented the second reading of budget 2021 in Parliament on Tuesday. Under the new budget proposal, the estimated government revenue for 2021 is 1,900 61 billion rupees and the total government expenditure is 3525 billion rupees as such the difference between the revenue and the expenditure is 1564 billion rupees government plans to maintain the budget gap at 9% of the gdp and the expected economic growth rate for 2021 is 5.5% the premier said during the budget speech <laughs> An agreement has been reached pertaining to the biggest investment project in the Hambantota Harbour Industrial Park. Accordingly, a tyre manufacturing plant is to be set up at a cost of 300 million US dollars. Shandong Hahoa Tyre Company of China, a leading tyre producer in the world has invested in the project chairman of the sri lanka board of investment susanta ratnayake and kawo minshang of shangdang hawa thai company have signed the agreement minister rohit abegunwardhan was also present on this occasion prime minister mahindra rajapaksha minister namal rajapaksha and chinese ambassador in sri lanka chi sheng hong have also joined the occasion through video technology according to the agreement the tyre output within three years is scheduled to be exported. The target is to manufacture annually 9 million tyres. 2,000 Sri Lankans will be provided with direct employment opportunities in the factory. This was the vision that Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa had 15 years ago in Mahindra Chintanya 2005. The vision was to develop Hambantota port as an important calling point for the provision of port facilities and other marine services and to establish another major economic zone in the country. This government has continued that vision of developing the Hambantota port into an international industrial and service port. The economic benefits this project will bring to Sri Lanka are impressive. With an investment of $300 million, an expected annual export earnings of around $300 million, the project also provides direct employment to approximately 2,000 locals, local residents in Hambantota. This will be a massive boost to the local economy. In this backdrop, we are indeed honored to have a company such as Shang Don Hauha Tire Company, which is one of the largest private tire manufacturers in China. 
choose Sri Lanka as an investment partner. I believe this is a good starting point towards achieving Sri Lanka's export revenue targets. Provision of fertilizer free of charge for cultivation of paddy and other crops in the Maha season is underway on district basis. The National Fertilizer Secretariat says that 70% of fertilizer stocks have already been distributed. The government has set aside a sum of 350 billion rupees for provision of fertilizer free of charge in the Maha season. So far, a sum of 10 billion rupees has, spent, has been spent on fertilizer for paddy cultivation. This amount has been spent for the provision of 214,000 metric tons of fertilizer. A further 25 billion rupees has been spent for the provision of 460,000 metric tons of fertilizer for other crops. 19,000 metric tons of fertilizer have been distributed among farmers for 68,870 hectares of paddy cultivation in the Polo Naru district. The anticipated paddy harvest from Polo Naru in the Maha season is 340,000 metric tons. 550 tons of fertilizer have been distributed for cultivation purposes in the Maha season in the New Aurelia district. The stock is to be utilized for cultivation of paddy in an extent of 4,300 hectares. The expected output from the New Aurelia district is more than 51,000 metric tons. 830 metric tons have been pr provided through 43 agrarian services centers in the Anuradhapura district. These crops are intended for cultivation of paddy fields of 123,000 hectares. The expected harvest is 475,000 metric tons. Former senior DIG of the Department of Criminal Investigations, Ravi Sarviratna, has revealed for the first time before the Presidential Commission investigating the Easter attack that bombers including Zaharan Hashim had planned on an attack in the year 2020. Giving evidence before the Commission, he has disclosed on more plans of the bombers. Parliamentarian Rishad Badyuddin says that he will submit an appeal to the Supreme Court against the verdict delivered recently by the Appeals Court regarding unauthorized construction by clearing the Kalaru forest bordering the Vilpatu Protectorate. He made these remarks giving evidence before the Presidential Commission investigating the Easter attack via internet from the magazine prison. Responding to a query by a member of the Commission regarding the number of singular people in the eastern province resettled in the north and east, he said that the singular population in the eastern province was now 2% and the Muslim population was at 5%. He also said that the LT had chased away around 100,000 Muslims during the war period and Minister Basil Rajapaksha had taken the lead to resettle them in the year 2009. Badiuddin further said that he had supported these initiatives. Accordingly, around 5,000 members of the Sinhalese community who were living in Monaragala and Hambantata were resettled in Kalabugaswava in Namhagama. He also said that during the resettlement process, massive trees of over 100 years old were cut but nobody had complained. A unique feature has been that the chairman and a member of the presidential commission inquiring into the Easter attack were also in the panel of appeal court judges who had given a verdict regarding an unauthorized clearing of the Vilpatu protectorate. The Jaffna court today dismissed four petitions filed seeking a writ order to prevent the attempts taken by the police to halt the Mahaviru commemoration. The police said that the decision rendered by the court was a historic verdict. A historical judgment was delivered by the Jaffna Provincial High Court today in respect of four cases uh, filed by uh, petitioners against the police. The petitioners uh, stated to the court that uh, police are going to prevent the LTT commemoration schedule from 25th to 27th of November uh, and the petitioners were seeking writ order from the court to derogate the police actions. However, the court rejected and refused the four petitions uh, filed by the petitioners and accordingly police can take action against the persons who organized Mahaviru commemorations or the ex-LTT commemorations in the northern province. And this is a historical judgment on behalf of the, uh, the state and the Attorney General, uh, Additional Solicitor General Sumati Dharmawadana, Deputy Solicitor General uh, Haripriya Jayasundara and Senior State Counsel Shahida Bari appeared uh, on behalf of the respondent of the case. The submissions made to the court and accordingly the court uh, accepted the, the argument made by the state and especially the provisions of the, the 13th Amendment of the 
constitution were discussed. Finally, the court rejected for petitions and therefore police are continuously taking preventive action against uh, unlawful assemblies and commemoration in respect of LTT carders. The National Operational Center for the Prevention of the Spread of COVID-19 says that the number of persons fully recovered from the disease has increased to 13,500. 319 fully cured patients have left hospitals today. Further operations are underway in search of a female patient who escaped from the IDH hospital Angoda while undergoing treatment. 190 cured COVID-19 patients have left the Valley Kanda Center in Polonnaruwa and Intermediate COVID Treatment Center in Ponani. They were residents of the districts of Colombo, Kurunagala, Gampaha, Ampara, Kandi, Nuarelia, Hambantota and Badulla. 9,191 fully cured COVID-19 patients had left hospitals from the beginning of this month until today. The highest number of discharges took place on the 5th of this month. Further search operations are underway to apprehend the female patient who underwent treatment at the IDH Angoda. She has fled on the 19th of this month with her child. A request has been made from the general public to convey any information relating to this woman to the telephone number of the police headquarters on 11 or to the Colombo Emergency Bureau telephone number 11 The percentage of the number of those fully recovered from the COVID-19 disease stands at 69.56. 30.06% of patients, which amounts to 5,873, are still receiving the treatment. 257 COVID-19 afflicted patients were identified in the country today. They all were reported to have close contacts with the patients of the Paleogoda COVID cluster. 11,388 PCR tests were conducted in the island yesterday. The total number of PCR tests conducted so far amounts to 724,166. The number of police of officials infected with the COVID-19 disease is 822. It includes 224 police special task force officials. The number of COVID-19 patients identified in the persons has increased to 629. This is News Live on Channel I, cremation of the late Mahanayaka of the Sri Lanka Ramanya Mahanikaya. The most venerable Napana Pemasiri Thera is scheduled to be conducted with full state honours at the Bandarnaka Vidyalaya grounds in Kundasale tomorrow. The remains of the late Mahanayaka Thera are being kept at uh, the Hurikadua Vidyasagara Piriven Viharasthane in Manikinda for the general public to pay their last respects. The most venerable Napana Pemasiri Thero was the 13th Mahanaika Thero of the Sri Lanka Ramanya Mahanikaya. A large crowd, including all religious leaders and people's representatives, have paid their respects to the remains of the late prelate today as well. They included His Eminence Archbishop of Colombo, Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, and former Prime Minister Ronnie Wickramasinghe. National television will give a live telecast of the funeral ceremony, which is scheduled to be commenced at 1.30 p.m. tomorrow. Sri Lanka Ramanya Mahanikaya Mahana. 
Kagama Pandida, Adigora, Napana, Primacy, Dana, Swami in the Anamahan Seed, Utum, Nuansu at Piva, E. Pratra, Granatra, Sangui, the Paturam, Mahanikai, Anunaka Swami in the Promoted Mahas, Ratnade, Memagaru Sabavi, Soke, Palakal Utai, Pujanagarmi. Ramanja Mahanikai, Mahanaka of the Sri Lanka, Amarpur Mahanikai, the most venerable Kotuguda, Dhammawas Thero. Has issued a message of condolence on the passing away of the Mahanaya Thero of the Sri Lanka Ramanya Mahanikaya. The communique issued in this connection recalls the services performed by the late Pemasiri Nayaka Thero for the Buddha Sasana and the society. Mahanaya of the Sri Lanka Amarpura Mahanikaya has further pointed out in this communique that the late Mahanaya Thero was most disciplined leader of the Mahasangha. He has explained and has exerted all efforts for the maintenance of the Sambuddha Sasana. One of the final attempts of the late Mahanaka Thero was to unify the Sri Lanka Amarapura Mahanikaya and the Sri Lanka Ramanya Mahanikaya. The most venerable Kotukuda Dhammavasanayaka Thero has also pointed out that the reason behind this initiative had been that both of these Nikayas were established by a single generation of the Mahasangha in Myanmar. A motion of condolence of the demise of the Mahanaya Thero of the Sri Lanka Ramanya Mahanikaya was presented in Parliament today by Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha. Construction of several more housing projects being implemented by the government has commenced recently. They are being implemented under the Saubhagya Dakma policy statement. Minister Dallas Alaha Peruma has presided over the inauguration of the Upper Akka Itigaha Villa multi-storied housing scheme in Mathara. 100 houses are to be constructed under the Siapatha housing project in this connection. Six houses constructed for low-income families in the Kaduel electorate were handed over to the recipient families today. The project has been implemented under the Obatagayak Ratatahita concept. A sum of 1.3 million rupees has been spent on the construction of a single house. The Community Development Fund of the Kaduel Municipal Council has spent 700,000 rupees and the Housing Development Authority 600,000 rupees in this regard. Minister Vimal Viravansha has presided over the inauguration ceremony. Well, it's time to end the news, but before we leave, we have a local weather alert that we have uh, just received. There is a weather warning issued by the Department of Meteorology a short while ago. It says that the disturbances in the southeastern area of the Bay of Bengal has developed into a low pressure condition by this morning. The report further says that it could further intensify the next 24 hours to 48 hours. The community also says that the adverse weather condition may leave the island via northeast by the 24th of this month. The department informs fishermen not to engage in fishing in the northeastern deep seas and till the 24th, it also cautions the naval personnel to refrain from engaging in activities in the deep and shallow sea areas during this period. It also requests to pay attention on the upcoming weather warnings as well. Well, with that weather alert, it's time to end the news. Do enjoy the rest of the programs. Take care and good night. Good night.